Hi again, thanks for joining me for another whiskey review. This is number five that we're on to. And for this, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So you may know that I run the Rare Malt Whiskey Company. And as part of the business, we host different whiskey tastings. One of our most popular events is to do a whiskey and cheese pairing. So we would maybe have five or six different malt whiskies from around the regions in Scotland. And each malt, we pick a luxury Scottish cheese and we, we pair them together to try and maybe enhance the flavours or even contrast it slightly. Um, it's, it's a bit of fun, but for today's video, I thought I would do a little mini whiskey and cheese tasting. So what we have is this gorgeous release from Glen Morangy Distillery. It's called a Midwinter Night's Dram. And as the name suggests, it's a really lovely festive release. The influence behind it supposedly is the great Scottish winters. Glen Morangy wanted to release a whisky that was just perfect for this time of year. So frosty, cold, a real winter warmer um, to help you get through the, the winter nights. So it's a midwinter night's dram and they have created it hopefully to be a whisky that you can curl up with on a, a cold frosty December evening in, in front of the fire and enjoy uh, with your family or friends or or, you know, during the, the ongoing festivities of the month of December. And what's quite nice about it is that it pays homage to um, the 16 men of Tain, who were the original distillery workers at Glen Morangy. So there were 16 men in production. And when it came to the end of the year, December, so they were given a special treat by way of an unusual or different whiskey. And that was their uh, little treat for the end of the year. And Glen Morangy, with this, I suppose, have, have done the same with us in that they've treated us to this whiskey as it is a seasonal and limited edition release. So it was about last Christmas time. However, it was then, uh, you know, it wasn't available throughout the rest of the year and it has resurfaced a little bit. However, it is only made for UK distribution. So I'm not sure if you will see it anywhere else, to be honest. So a little bit about the whiskey itself. It's non-age statement, so they've not given us um, the age of the whiskey. What we do know, however, is that it's a combination of American white oak bourbon casks and European oak Oloroso sherry casks. So it has got a lovely, lovely dark colour to it. It's a really nice bottle. Um, the packaging itself, I think, really matches together nicely and... You won't be able to see it, but the label actually has a little bit of sparkle through it, which is really nice. I think it's a lovely, I think it's an, a really nice whiskey to, you know, give as a gift to somebody. Or if you are having a sort of festive evening, it's nice, a nice dram to take along and share with people. Um, and I, I think it's actually a, an excellent whiskey. The price point on the whiskey is, I think, quite reasonable. It, it does depend on the retailer, but maybe around £50 average, although um, beware if you are looking to purchase it maybe out with the, the winter season, you might notice a spike in the price um, simply because it wasn't available all throughout the year and it's only sort of resurfaced again. However, we'll move on to having a little taste of the, the whiskey itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try the whiskey on its own and we'll just go through the different uh, flavours of it and then um, I'm going to try it with a little bit of cheese just to give you an idea of what we might do at some of our tastings. So I actually have a, another bottle already opened. <laughs> so it is a lovely looking whiskey and I think the fact that it is limited is quite unusual and the price is not too dear at all. Um, already, you know, I think it's in my favour. So on the nose there, it has got a really lovely nose to it. And with them trying to market this as a winter warmer, a cosy dram, certainly on the nose, that is what I'm getting. There, I mean, there is a freshness to it, but it's also got... A definite rich rich flavor to it as well as just being quite soothing quite relaxing which maybe maybe sounds odd but it just is almost something like reminds you of a 
cosy log fire. So there is a little bit of sweetness there, I would say along the lines of sort of toffee, but the main sort of aroma from it is reminding me of mulled wine, that sort of Christmassy scent. Um, maybe a, a tiny little bit of sort of orange peel, if you, if you try really hard. <laughs> So I'll just give it a little taste. Mm. It's very smooth. And I think, I think it's got really quite a rich texture to it. There is a definite little bit of sort of a peppery spiciness. But what I'm also getting is that sherry influence. They haven't, they haven't given us a breakdown on exactly which casks are used, but I think judging by the colour as well, it is reasonably dark. I think there's this quite a strong sherry influence and I'm certainly tasting that. I think what we could get there from the nose, that sort of toffee, that's there as well. Almost more like caramel now though. And the sherry fruits, which is maybe what we, what I picked up on as the mulled wine, that, that's certainly lingering. The finish, it's really leaving a gorgeous, gorgeous flavour. It's leaving me with that taste of Christmas. Maybe the caramel, certainly a little bit of spice. But overall, I, I, think this is a really, really good whiskey. But as I said, we've got a little bit of cheese that I'm going to pair it with. So the cheese that I have is called the Barways Cheddar. So when we do the tastings, we use our local cheesemonger, George Muse, which is based um, in Glasgow, and he provides us with all the cheese that we use. And I worked, I've worked very closely with George to pick and choose which whiskies and which cheese we're going to put together and create these you know, flavour pairings. So this cheese is from George Muse, but I should emphasise that the, the cheese itself are, are similar to the malt whiskies and as in that they are a premium product. They are made from small little hand crafted farms and it's not made in huge big batches. It does mean that with every batch there actually can be a little difference in flavour. I have a little bit of the Barbies cheddar just here, so this is what it looks like. It's known for being quite a tangy, sharp, full body cheese. It's matured for 14 months. It's made from a herd of pedigree cattle in Ayrshire. That is the Barbies cheddar. The flavour of the cheese itself, I find does have a spiciness to it, and I think that's what pairs it quite well with this Glenmorangie because there's a little bit of spiciness there and I think it brings it together quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sip of the whiskey and I'm really going to coat my whole mouth with it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the cheese and hopefully the flavors will come together and we'll see what happens. So with whiskey obviously being a strong alcohol and very complex, the flavour lingers in your mouth, especially if you do swirl it around like I did there. And then if you take a little bit of the cheese, the flavours of the cheese seem to blend together with the whiskey. And I think it really is a lovely combination. I know wine and cheese has been very prominent for, for a number of years now, but I think whiskey and cheese is kind of on the rise. In this particular combination, the sherried sweetness, but spiciness as well, comes together with the sharp tagginess of the cheese. And it really makes a lovely combination. 
The cheese itself is quite complex and maybe that's why it does pair particularly well with whiskey because we do know there's so many different tastes that will go on in a whiskey. And it's a bit like this cheese. There's there's a little bit of a sweetness to it, but it's certainly, it's quite a strong cheddar. Um, it's not a mild cheese. And that also it helps it stand up against the flavor of a really strong alcohol. So we'll have a, another little taste. Personally, I, I just really like this combination. Um, maybe because I chose it. <laughs> it's not going to meet everyone's taste, but I think if you wanted to try something like this, you would be you'd be able to find a sort of stronger cheddar uh, wherever you are, and and just see what what you think. Um, I think sometimes doing a whiskey tasting. You do need something else to, I think it's nice to pair something along with it and it, it makes not just about the whiskey but particularly for me trying to showcase a lot of what Scotland can do, we would we would use Scottish cheese as well. So with this whiskey, it's got a good price point, it has that sort of slightly limited factor to it that it's not something that you're going to see every single day and it's very smooth, it's perfect for this time of year going to give it a score of 74. Um, it's less than the, some of the previous ones, but those are truly exceptional and, and a much higher price range. So I think for the price of this dram, it's really, really good. So I just want to try and explain a little bit more about what we would maybe do in one of our pairings or our whiskey tastings. But this is certainly something that, you know, you, you know, can try at home if you're having friends over. I think it's quite nice to introduce a malt whiskey maybe alongside something, particularly if you do have guests that don't normally drink whiskey and you're, you're kind of keen to try, get them to try something, maybe try a little bit of cheese or chocolate. And it, I think it can help to mellow the flavour as well, with whiskey obviously being a, a strong alcohol. <clears throat> well, I have got a little bit of whiskey left here and some more cheese, so I think I'll leave you for the moment and I'll see you on the next review. But thank you very much for watching and I hope you are enjoying the festivities. Slanjava.